much. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Sue. Okay. Can you all okay. hear me? Can everybody? Hang on, hang on, hang on, Sue. Let me do just a quick welcome and introduction, then I will hand over to you. Gosh. Okay. Oh, hello. Who, who's that? Wait a minute. I'm trying to share the screen here. Well, while you're doing that, Stuart, do you want to make yep. an introduction? Okay. Brought the average right. age down. <laughs> okay. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Uh, welcome this lovely sunny afternoon. Nice to see so many of you joining us. Um, many of you no doubt will have had the opportunity to visit the Bushy Museum. Certainly for those who live in Bushy probably have. It's uh, a wonderful place and most amazing information in terms of the history of Bushy and wonderful pictures of many, many years ago. Um, Sue, welcome to Sue, Sue Gill, who has um, been with us before and last time gave us a wonderful tour of Hampstead. So Sue is now going to give us uh, a tour about Bushy. We're obviously going to learn a lot more about Bushy than we ever knew before and I think what she says is that she's going to both surprise and astound us. So Sue over to you to astound us and surprise us and just one quick other thing Sue asks that you have a pen and paper ready because she's going to give us some information later about the Bushy Festival and other dates that will be of interest to us. So welcome, Sue, and over to you. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very, very much for giving up your afternoon in the sunshine to come to this Zoom meeting. Now, can everybody hear me clearly? Yeah, you're loud and, and clear, Can everybody Sue. see the screen? The screen yeah, is that's fine. Right clear. Lovely. Yeah. I was going to put a virtual background, not my study. But unfortunately, my computer upgraded overnight and I couldn't get my virtual background. No. So this is my email address. If I don't manage to answer any of your questions, please jot down my email address. And if anything crops up, it's here, Sue Devons Gill with one L at me.com. Now, most of you know I'm a London registered blue badge tour guide. And you've heard Simon give, give a few talks. Uh, Blue Badge tour guides are giving talks on Zoom now because a lot of them are out of work. I'm very lucky I'm retired, so I don't need to earn my living as a Blue Badge guide anymore. So I do it. I give these talks to raise money for Blood Cancer UK. Uh, my uncle, who shared a room with me when I was in Israel during the Six Day War, sadly died of leukemia when he was only 51 years old. Oh. So since then, I, since the time of 1967, 68, I've been raising money for blood cancer. Sadly, my sister who lives in California has got lymphoma, but she has survived a bone marrow transplant in 10 years. So this is the worthwhile cause I raise the money for. And if any of you want me to give a talk to any organization, please do uh, contact me. There's my email address. While I'm showing you the slides, you might like to switch off your video, but please make sure you've got them on at the end so you can ask questions then and I can see your face. You can either put your questions in the chat box or just raise your hand and Daphne will be here to help me make sure I answer. Now, did you know there are buildings in Bushy that date back to 1016? Did you know there used to be a castle in Bushy with a film studio inside it? I didn't know that until a few years ago. Did you know that three famous men have left who've left lasting memorials in Bushy were all brought up in complete poverty and left school before the age of 12? I'm going to tell you a little about, about these men. Lord Plumley lived here. Did you? did you know that Desert Island Disc was invented by a Bushy residents? Yeah, and did you know you can walk in the grounds of an old manor house? These are some of the things we'll be covering. I want to thank Marlene, Josephine and Joy, who all helped me in the research. I was given a lovely video by Margaret and Jim Craig Gray. I had help from people from the Bushy Museum, from the Rose Garden, a retired local policeman, Lawrence Brass, who I'm our new Liberal Democratic County Councillor, who I'm pleased to say is in our audience today. Steve and Francis Francis, who organized the Bushy Festival, and from Daphne and Ronnie Levine. So many people have helped me. It's taken months to get all these facts together. I did have to prune quite a bit and I've left out most of Bushy Heath. 
Now, this talk will cover general introduction to Bushy Village with a brief history, the story of the art colony and Hubert Herkimer and Lucy Kemp Welsh. I can hear somebody's voice. Could you all make sure you're on mute, please? Thank you so much. It will, uh, some of the famous residents, buildings and special walks, places to visit, including the Rose Garden, the Bushy Museum and Reveley Lodge. And I want to talk about special events and organizations, social, religious and retail. Now, very important, everybody. I've only lived in Bushy for 14 years and I'd welcome any of your additional contributions and stories. And I'm also pleased to see that Raina Vincent is in the audience because she helped me a lot when I first moved to Bushy, Raina and her late husband, Norman, and they actually introduced me to the U3A and many walks. So I've got lots of people to thank for all their help in this talk. Now, I live in Bridgewater Way. I hope you can see your little marker here. I moved to Bridgewater Way in 2007, but I didn't know that round the corner in Melbourne Road, there was the place where the castle was. So let's have a look at it. Not only that, but I didn't know how wonderful Bushy was from the terms of the walk and the countryside. This is taken just from just behind the Royal Connaught. It's one of our beautiful open spaces. Miles and miles you can walk, uninterrupted and beautiful countryside. So and you haven't shared your screen, we can't see anything. I did share my screen, did you show screen share? No, it's fine, it's actually fine, so it's working well. I don't understand it, why somebody can't see it, because I asked okay. you at the beginning, everybody can see it. Yeah, it's, so it's fine, it's fine. There must be somebody whose machine isn't working. Now, if you, uh, there is a map you can get, Bushy and District Footbath map, map, and those of you who like walking, you can get hold of this, and if you can't, it's from www.badfa organization.uk. If you have any problems, just email me and I'll send you this if you like walking. Now, what was it that I liked about Bushy? Well, this statue in King George's Park says it all for me. There is something here for the old, for the young, for the families, the green spaces. There is so much going on here. I just think we're so lucky to live in this lovely area. And this is the road where I live, Bridgewater Way. Now, I told you that there were three men who've left lasting impressions on Bushy, all of whom died at the age, uh, sorry, all of whom were brought up in poverty and left school at the age of 12. Did you know the war memorial was designed by a man called William Reed Dick, who lived from 1878 to 1961. He became the president of the Royal Society of British Sculptors. He was knighted by King George V. There's a statue of George V outside Westminster Abbey designed by William Reed Dick. Where was William Reed Dick born? He was born in the Gorbals in Glasgow. You probably remember that as an area for riots and extreme poverty. He left school at 12, but was lucky enough to be accepted for Glasgow School of Art. He died at the age of 83. Not only did he design our lovely War Memorial, who is, which is up Clay Lane, he also designed the RAF Memorial on the embankment in London. He designed the Pieta in St. Paul's Cathedral, and he designed the Menin Gate in Belgium. A great man, a lasting memorial of somebody who's left their memorial here in Bushy. But here is another man who lived just round the corner to me, Hubert Herkimer. Now Herkimer was one of the most famous residents in Bushy. Hubert Herkimer, became a member of the Royal Academy and was also knighted. He was born in Bavaria in Germany in 1849 and he lived until 1914. His family were also very poor. He also left school at the age of 12. His family went to seek their fortune in the United States where they had relatives, but they weren't very lucky. So when Hubert was only eight years old, they moved to Southampton. His father was a wood carver and his mother used to give uh, lessons to people, but a very, very poor childhood. So he went to Southampton where he uh, went to drawing classes and then he moved to Bushy a few years later and he founded the School of Art here in Bushy in 1883 when he was 33 years old. 
Now, he did not charge his students anything. It was founded. He, he didn't earn a salary there. He, re, he directed it without any payment. And from what I know, he didn't charge his students much money. He was absolutely devoted to art. And the present Rose Garden is the site of his art school. Now, he had three wives. I couldn't find out where his first wife, why Anna Weiss is buried, but this was his first wife, Anna Weiss. And she died in the, on the year that, when Herkimer was only 33, and the year he founded the art school, 1883. She had a beautiful nurse who came from Ruthin in North Wales. Her name was Lulu. And the building that Hubert Herkimer had erected called Lululand is round the corner to my house in Melbourne Road. We might even have somebody in the audience who've got friends who live in there because it's now been converted to a luxury block of flats. Herkimer was madly in love with Lulu, but she died after a year. So he married her the year after his wife died. She'd been his nurse. She died a year later. Then he married a third time. This lady became Lady Herkimer after Hubert was knighted and she outlived him, Margaret. She outlived him and after his death, she moved out of the castle he built and moved into things. But the, this is her, the Herkimer's tomb, which is in St. James's churchyard. Now part of St. James's church goes back to 1016, the reign of King Canute. Hard to imagine we've got such an old church in Bushy. But if you go, if you walk down to the front of the St. James's Church in Bushy Village, you can see Herkimer's grave and guess which of the three wives is buried with him. Not the first one who gave him two children, not the third one who looked after him when he was old. The second one, Lulu, is the one who's buried with him there. Margaret has a separate grave behind him. Now, this is the building that Herkimer had built for himself when he was professor at the School of Art. And by the way, I, I'm not sure, actually, I told you no tuition. Herkimer didn't receive a salary, but I'm not sure. This I couldn't find out. Maybe somebody in the audience knows if the students had to pay money. What I do know is that the students took lodgings in a lot of the little cottages you see scattered around Bushy. And there were about 500 students. There was an equal number of girls and boys, but the girls were not allowed to mix with boys. I used to have, I think he gave them separate classes. They were certainly not allowed to have any romantic relationships if they wanted to be in the art school. But Herkimer himself was married three times. Now Herkimer, not only was he a gifted artist, he did engravings like his father, he did wood carvings, he made films. And I mentioned to you, there were many famous residents in Bushy. One of the residents who used to act in his film was the actor A.E. Matthews. In 1869, long before he founded the art school, so 1869, he was still in, if he was born in 1849, he was just 20 years old. He first exhibited at the Royal Academy at the age of 20, and he sold a painting for two guineas, which in those days was a lot of money. But just two years later, he sold a painting for 500 pounds. So he was a very, very gifted man. And as I said, not only did he paint in oil and watercolor and do engravings, but he was a pioneer, pioneer filmmaker and printer. Now, this is the all that remains of Lululand. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this in Melbourne Road, this building. And when I moved in in 2007, the British Legion was situated behind this doorway. Now, if you want to know where the block of flats is, it's just on the right here, a bit jutting out. The building itself, Lululand, was made of a German sort of limestone called Tufa stone. And the whole building was designed by an American architect called Richardson, and he designed it for Herkimer in return for, guess what? Having his portrait painted. So let's look at the close-up of the plaque, which you can see today, on the front of this building. 
It's the only surviving part of Lululand, the home of Sir Hubert von Herkimer, a Victorian artist from 1894 until his death in 1914. And as Stuart said in the introduction, if you want to learn more, visit Bushy Museum. But I'm going to take you a little bit visually to the museum as part of our tour. Now, when Herkimer died in 1914, his widow Margaret didn't want to go on living in this huge castle. So what did she do? She moved out and the whole place became very dilapidated. In 1939, apparently the council had a meeting whether to preserve the building or not. And the chairman had the casting vote. Well, in 1939, there was a lot of anti-German feeling around because it was just before the Second World War. Plus, it was a very expensive building to maintain and to preserve. So it was pulled down in 39. And that's why the doorway is the only thing which is remaining. But there's very divided opinion about this because some people say if that castle was still standing, we'll just go back and look at it again. If the castle was still standing, it might make Bushy a very big tourist attraction. But do we want that? I don't know. Anyway, I'd like to hear your opinions at the end. So that's Lululand. And now let's look at some of the paintings which Herkimer produced. This is one of his most famous masterpieces. It's called The Last Muster, and it's of Chelsea pensioners. And this really made his name. Now, this one's in the Lady Lever Gallery in, in Liverpool. But can you see that pensioner is actually dead? The man next to him is feeling his pulse. He, uh, Herkimer was very interested in social realism. He was very influenced by a popular Victorian painter called Luke Fields, who painted in the Tate uh, Britain, The Sick Child. But this was ladies in the workhouse. And probably those ladies were younger than many of us are. Remember, there were no dentists, very few dentures in those days. And the women were given these frilly caps and without teeth. I'm afraid they didn't look very attractive. We're so lucky nowadays. And this is a very famous painting by Herkimer called Hard, Hard Times. This one's in the Manchester Art Gallery. And I believe this, I'm not sure if this is Cold Harbour Lane, but it's one of the bushy roads here. And you can see the poor peasant and his family sitting by the roadside. Now it's said that Van Gogh was influenced by Herkimer's paintings and that he inspired his paintings that he painted of the potato eaters, if any of you know that. And this one I actually took in the Bushy Museum. Now I did ask the museum if I could take one or two uh, paint, uh, photographs and they gave me permission, but I'm not allowed to reproduce any paintings by Lucy Kemp Welsh. There's a whole gallery in Bushy Museum and they're still under copyright. So I do suggest you go there yourselves to see that. And this is the exhibition which is on at the moment in Bushy Museum of Herkimer. And you can see the wood carving which was done by his family. And you'll be able to hear also sound recordings and see more of the history. So do go there yourselves. Now, as you come out, if you go out of Melbourne Road and you go past Herkimer's um, house, opposite it, there are some buildings which look very arts and crafts style, don't they? Now, I would have thought that these were built in the 1920s, but they're not. As I did my research, I found out these were built in about 1898. And I told you at the beginning of my talk that we've got buildings in Bushy built by famous architects. I'm sure that many of you have heard of George Gilbert Scott, who designed the Albert Memorial in Kensington Gardens, opposite the Royal Albert Hall, yeah. or designed St Pancras Station. Gilbert Scott, a very famous exponent of the Gothic revival in Victorian times. Well, his grandson was Giles, also quite famous because he designed the red letterbox. But until I did this research, I didn't find out that Giles had a brother called Adrian Gilbert Scott. And he designed these buildings, but not only that, they incorporate an electric bell system, which was linked to rooms within Lululand. So as Herkimer got old, the servants working for him were housed in these buildings. So next time you walk down Melbourne Road, do have a look at these houses. I think they're superb. 
So they were built between 1898 and 1914. And today they're privately owned. I think they're lovely homes. And there's another one. And there's another view of them. I think they're lovely. Now, as Herkimer's in, uh, business got bigger and bigger, he needed more properties. So he built this room and this was used for some of his experimental work in films and printing and so on. This is now an office. And on the corner of the road, this building was used by Herkimer for printing. And when I, I took my um, family round on a rehearsal for this walk, and they told me they used to take their photographs in there to be printed. So, but guess what it is now? Flats. Flats. And this is something that made me very sad as I was doing my research. I saw many, many beautiful buildings and unfortunately they're all being converted into flats and property, often without parking. Let's hope that we will be inspired to keep our village as much as we can. This is a building across the road and you've probably noticed that at the moment the Heronsley brothers, the Heronsley group live there and they are members of our synagogue, the two brothers, uh, the Heronsley property group. But can you guess what this was used for by Herkimer? Look at the glass roof at the top. It was his film studio. Uh -huh. And if you walk just where it says Melbourne Road and just there, there's some little windows, which were the ticket office for the film studio. I've been walking with all kinds of people, including the retired local policeman, and he pointed that out to me. Okay. Now, if I haven't got a photograph of this, but if you walk around the corner to the left at the end of Melbourne Road, you come to St Hilda's School. And my house is actually just behind St Hilda's School. Well, this week I gave the Hampstead talk to Bushy Youth Rie, and I mentioned that I was working on a project about Bushy, and I got a very interesting email from one of the audience. And it, she said that her mother went to St Hilda's School when it was founded by Violet Curry in 1918, and her mother was one of the first pupils. She said she and her sister also went there, and one of the teachers was a Mrs Crawshay, who was the sister-in-law of Clement Attlee. Oh, wow. Yeah, the Labour Prime Minister. And her younger sister was in a class with Charlotte Rampling, the film star. So I'm always very interested to get feedback from my audience because everything I've learnt, I've learnt from fellow residents in Bushy or by walking round and seeing. Now, the Horse and Chains pub, I'm sure most of you know that this is where the horses used to stop. Uh, people used to, with heavy loads of goods and so on used to stop at the top of Clay Lane to carry their goods up the hill from Bushy Village up towards Bushy Heath. And they would hire a horse and chains to pull them up the hill. And apparently the horses used to find their way back down. Now, when I was doing my research as well, I found out there used to be 29 pubs in Bushy, going from Bushy Arches all the way up to where the Alpine used to be. Most of them, as you know, have been pulled down, but there is a lovely restaurant in there in the Horse and Chains. Now, I was just going to tell you briefly a little bit about the history of Bushy. So while we're looking at the Horse and Chains, uh, part of Bushy goes back to Roman times. And if you go into the grounds of what's now called the Grange Academy, before that was called the Bushy Academy, and before that was called Bushy Hall School, at the top of Falconer Road, it's changed names three times since I've lived in Bushy in the 14 years. And anyway, if you go into the grounds as part of the old Roman road, the straight Roman road, which was parallel to Bushy Village High Street. Bushy was first mentioned in the Doomsday Book in 1086 at the time of William the Conqueror. It was an agricultural village and the old English meaning for Bushy is a thicket or a bush. In 13th century is the manor of Bourne Hall, which is where you can go walking. Bushy Heath really developed during the Napoleonic Wars uh, when there were food shortages and it was known as Bushy Common then. Going, if going, coming, passing through bushes, there are 117 trains every day. We're just 16 minutes from London, and a day return will cost you £17.40. But if you get the cheap day return, it's only £8.70. 
Uh, what else can I tell you? Well, we're not going to talk about Hartsborn Manor today. I'm sure you all know that our shawl was founded in 1968 and it's now got close on 2,500 members. And Lawrence kindly came over and discussed all this with me. And at first I said, there are 25,000 inhabitants in Hartsmere. And he quickly corrected me and said, no, it's 25,000 inhabitants in, in Bushy itself, far more in Hartsmere. And I'd been asked what Hartsmere means. And apparently the name was made up by the council. And we're just 15 miles from London. Some of the famous residents in Bushy have included Andrew Ridgely, who lived just off Chilton Avenue. And of course, he formed Wham with George Michael, who was a fellow student at Bushy Mead School. Roy Plumley lived in Bushy Lane. Freddie Bunce, the footballer. The boxer, John Conti. The Attenborough cousins lived in Hayden Hill House. David and Richard only visited it. Lionel Blair lived for five years in Windmill Lane. And I mentioned A.E. Matthews, the actor, and Somebody told me while I was doing my research that the street, the four tubs, which goes off Little Butchie Lane, just before Children Avenue, it's apparently named after A. Matthews because he had four bathrooms in his house. Now, that's what <laughs> I, heard. I can't prove any of this, but I've, I've learned some very interesting things. Right, let's move on now past the country club. And doing my research, I walked in there and met the young Bengali man called Ash, who's the manager. It's been leased out to a conference center, but apparently at the top, that restaurant there, uh, is open to the public and they sell shush kebabs and all kinds of stuff. I don't think they're kosher, but they, well, I'm sure they do vegetarian meals, but he leases it out for banquets and he's very keen that the school uh, is not built on that site. I think they've got a five year lease, but Lawrence can correct me at the end if I've got those, that fact wrong. Now, this is the beautiful lake. I managed to get there before the, the uh, banqueting people moved in and it's at the back of Beaumont House. At the moment, we can't get access to the lake. You have to ask the people inside the country club, but because they own the grounds now, they hold a lot of weddings, bar mitzvahs, parties and so on. And the lake is part of the uh, lease when they lease it out. I actually took some people on a walk around Bushy two weeks ago and I asked this young man if I could take them down to the lake. And he said, no, we're having a wedding there and the wedding party will be there. I mean, I would love to see this lake open to the public. I think it would make a superb public park, but I think that's in my dreams. Now, just past Melbourne Avenue on the right is a United Church and it's become a theatre and studio. But did you know there's some little houses behind it? Very pretty little houses. And these are privately owned. But we're going to go now to the Rose Garden, which I absolutely love. And uh, they do have a Friends of the Rose Garden. I strongly recommend that some of you might think about joining that because they have lots of lovely activities and it's only five pounds a year for an indiv individual or eight pounds a year for a family. Now do look up Bushy Rose Garden's website. It's www.friendsofbushyrosegarden.uk. They have all kinds of events. And I really, really recommend it. During the Bushy Festival, I'm going to tell you later about two events which are being organized in the Rose Garden. It's open to everybody and you can see the times of opening on the gate, 7.30 to seven in the summer, 7.30 to four in the winter. And it's under Hartsmere Borough Council, but it was originally part of Herkimer's art school and part of his garden. In 2002, it was recognized as a garden of special historic interest, grade two. But then there was vandalism and it was closed in 2005. It's, in 2008, it was funded by the Heritage Lottery, Lottery Fund and officially reopened in 2010. But who was the garden designed by? I told you there were three men who've left a lasting mark on Bushy, all of whom left school at the age of 12. 
The man who designed this garden was a man called Thomas Hayton Mawson. Hello, and he came from Lancashire and left school at 12. His father was a warper in a cotton mill. So he, he also left school early. He worked in landscaping, came down to London and was very successful. Herkimer heard of him and got him to design the garden in exchange for guess what? A painting. A painting. Very good. A painting. Uh, and those of you who know uh, Hampstead Heath, at the top there's a pergola. Well, this garden includes a pergola. Uh, Mawson became president of the Town Planning Institute and in 1929 was the first president of the Institute of the Landscape Architects. So Dick, the War Memorial, Herkimer, the artist, and Mawson, three brilliant men who left school early and all left lasting memorials to Bushy. Now, what can we see in the Rose Garden? Apart from beautiful flowers. Here you can see the summer house. Now, this summer house is a grade two listed building and it's an information office. This sunken fountain is made of the same stone as Herkimer's house Lululand was made. This stone, this limestone called Tufa stone. Uh, it's sunken. And if you look at the base of this fountain, there are eight little paths. Now, if you know anything about Buddhism, the Buddhists had the eightfold path to enlightenment. And apparently Hubert Herkimer, Hubert von Herkimer was influenced by the Buddhist philosophy. And he asked Mawson when he was designing the garden to include these eight paths. And this is a sunken garden, a sunken fountain in the center. The garden itself has four, over 4,000 plants. And you, if you speak to the gardener, he will give you a catalogue. There in the background, you can see the pergola, which is very, very similar to the one in Golders Hill Park, very near to Whitestone Pond. These cloisters were pulled down and they are the only remnants of the art school. And when you go into the Rose Garden, you can see a picture of the art school on the gates. They were re-erected in the mid 90s when apparently they were found by the Thames Valley water at a depot amongst the litter. And they were brought back here and re-erected. Re and this lovely plaque is at the far end of the pergola. If you walk up to the pergola and walk to the far end, you can see this plaque and it says the house brings luck. I think I had to phone a friend who speaks German. If any of you speak uh, German, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it means the house brings luck. And it's a replacement plaque because when the gardens were vandalized, the original one was stolen. Right, before we move on, I just want, I said I'd give you some dates now of the events which are going to take place, the Bushy Festival. I've got this piece of paper here. So if you want to write down with your pencil and paper on the 25th of July in the Rose Garden at two o'clock, that there will be a classical chorus. Just bear with me a minute. That's two o'clock on Sunday, the 25th of July. Free music in the park. They'll be performing favorite choral harmonies from classical music to theater in the Rose Garden from Hofboss 2. But if you get there at two, you can take your blanket and sit there and save a place. And it's completely free of charge. The organizers of Bushy Festival do go around with a bucket to collect for the thing. The week before, it's on the Saturday, uh, but even from people could go because you can go in and just listen at three o'clock on Saturday the 17th. They've got something called Rhythm and Roses in the afternoon, which is also a musical event. So that's two events in the Rose Garden as part of Bushy Festival. The 17th at three o'clock in the afternoon, Rhythm and Roses. The 25th at two o'clock in the afternoon, Classical Chorus. OK, and do look online for the Bushy Festival, which is organized by Steve Francis, and they also have a website. If you just Google Bushy Festival, you can get the complete program, and I really recommend it. 
Now, opposite the Rose Garden is Beaumont House. When Bushy became a community village in the 17th, 18th, 19th century, you had big houses owned by wealthy people. And then you had the cottages where the students from the art school would often lease rooms and stay. And this apparently was owned by Clutterbrooks, the brewers. Later, it became the offices of Godfrey Davis, and then it became Beaumont Health uh, Retirement Home, which I think is quite expensive from what I hear. But maybe some of you might know how much it costs to stay there. I, I haven't got the prices. Now, if you're interested in the old buildings in Bushy, at the moment, there's a wonderful exhibition at Bushy Museum. And it's called, just a second, let me find my right page here. The name of this is uh, 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 Bushy after the 1940s. Uh, sorry, Bushy before the 1840s. Let's get it right. Bushy before the 1840s. They've got an exhibition of all the houses, or most of the houses, which are grade two listed in Bushy. And these are two of them. And that's on the ground floor of the museum. The Herkimer and Lucy Kemp Welsh are up on the first floor. So there's another view of the village. And we've got a plethora of pubs in the village still standing. Most of them are now gastro pubs. The Red Lion has quizzes and is also has a lovely COVID friendly garden. You have to swipe your COVID card to get into the garden. But we're going to walk down Park Place, which is one of these old roads and see a few lovely things in Park Place. Now, I was very pleased to see that the property developers here developed some very tasteful houses. Apparently, there used to be a garage on this site. This is the smallest pub in Bushy. It's in Park Road. It's called The Swan. It has some very interesting little brick a brick inside. And they've taken advantage of the COVID restrictions to develop their garden a little bit and have outdoor eating as well. I don't know how many of you know this shop right at the um, end of Park Road, but I wanted to make you aware of it. It's often open when we have an arts festival in Bushy. But this year I phoned the owner, a man called Anthony, Anthony Wildig, and he said it's not open because of COVID restrictions. But he sells lovely little bric-a-brac and paintings, which he does himself. His garden is absolutely fabulous. And I'm sure once the COVID restrictions are lifted, he'll be opening his garden against, again to the public. He no longer does antique furniture restoration. But I recommend this very, very highly to you. It's called The Old Bakery. And look on all the websites of the art festivals and Bushy Festival. And it will say, here's his number, 9506498. If you're interested, he always lets people in to buy things with masks on. And he sells beautiful paintings and greetings cards, all done by himself. And he has a painting of the week in the window. Opposite him, this is, oh, this is, I couldn't get a photograph of his garden, but this is one of the houses in Bushy. And his garden is similar to this about 10 times bigger. Now opposite, also in Park Road, are the Reeverly Arms Houses. And I was lucky enough to meet a lady when I was doing some volunteer work up at Reeverly Lodge, whose father lived in this particular house. And he was a retired army officer. He's now since passed away. But I think these arms houses, which were founded in the same year that he, Herkimer began his art school, were founded by a man called Reeverly, who lived in Reeverly Lodge, a very wealthy inhabitant of Bushy. And I believe originally they were just founded for churchgoers. And I think that's still the case. One of the trustees is Carrie Keats, who was a Bushy councillor. Another of the trustees is John Whiteman, the estate agent. In Bushy Museum, you can see on the wall, on the ground floor, some rules for the inmates of the Bushy Arms House. Each arms house must be kept in a state of great cleanliness and neatness, and the path must be carefully weeded. Personal cleanliness must be observed by each inmate. No inmate shall take in a lodger. 
no arms person shall be absent from the arms house for a period exceeding 72 hours. No trading whatsoever will be allowed on the premises. If any inmate is guilty of insobriety, dishonesty, breach of rules, habitual use of bad language or immoral or becoming conduct or shall become quarrelsome, uh, the trustees may on proof thereof remove such a person and take possession of the house occupied by them. And that's just some of the many rules of the almshouses. So these are at the end of Park Road. And there you can see we've come down Park Road and we've come to the almshouse. Now, if you walk a little bit along Herkimer Road, I don't know how many of you have seen this, but this is the Bushy Chabad. And Lawrence told me that the rabbi in it was the rabbi who features in the musical Come From Away, the American rabbi, which I didn't know before. Now, but we're going to go up to Bushy Museum. Now, the Bushy Museum was founded in 1983, the centenary of the establishment of Herkimer's Art School. Before COVID, it was open from Thursday to Sunday from 11 to 4. It's now only open Thursday to Saturday from 11 to 4. As I mentioned, the current exhibition, which is on the ground floor, is Bushy before, it's called Before the Railways Came to Bushy. And they're talking about more than 50 surviving grade two listed buildings from before 1840 in Bushy. Upstairs is the Herkimer exhibition, which I showed you with the bed, and paintings by Lucy Kemp Welsh. I am not allowed to show any of her paintings, superb paintings of horses, because they're all under, um, what's the word? Um, I can't think of the word. <laughs> they're all, uh, I can't think of the word. Somebody must know it in the audience. You can't show something. Copyright. 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 Thank you, the word went out <laughs> of my head. Now, the, paint, the museum is housed by volunteers. They work in the shop. They steward people around the museum. And Barry Hyman, nice Yiddish man, is in charge of the stewards. And I said to him that I'd mention that they're always looking for stewards. It's a lovely thing to do. I think one or two people in the audience work as stewards there. It's a lovely way of meeting people and also giving back to the community. So Bushy Museum has a website www.bushymuseum.org. If any of you are interested in applying to be a steward, if you email me, I can give you Barry Hyman's contact details and he would be very interested in hearing from you. The other thing you might be interested in is there's an organization called the Friends of the Bushy Museum, which was established in 1985. And I know several of us in the audience belong to this. I belong to it. There are 700 members. It's only 15 pounds a year. And for that, you get a newsletter. You have superb outings and there are talks. It's 15 pounds a year for a single person, 19 for a family. Now, when I came to Bushy, I didn't know anybody apart from Raina. I think she was the only person I knew. Raina and Joe Wayne were the only people I knew in Bushy. I now know hundreds through going to belonging to the Friends of the uh, Museum, Friends of the Rose Garden, the U3A. We have so many wonderful organizations you can meet people through. I think we are extremely lucky to live here. Right. So there's something about the reopening of the museum. And I didn't see this exhibition about the children when I went in there. I must have gone into the wrong room. But here, the museum used to be the council offices. The fire station next door is still empty. And this is from their website. If you're interested in learning more about Hubert von Herkimer or about Lucy Kemp Welsh, you can go on the website or even better go to the museum. And on their wonderful website, you can see what's on, the artists, the friends, the museum shops, all links to volunteering and how to contact them. And this is a bit more about the Bushy Festival. This is on a Saturday morning, so I don't know. I don't think it's really appropriate for many of you, but they've got a community and craft market at King George Recreation Ground. Now we're going back up to the high street 
And I just wanted to quickly look at a couple of jewels in Bushy Village Crown, a couple of retail jewels. On the corner of Cow Lane is Mavis's, a haberdashery shop. And we were all very sad last year when we saw it was up for sale. It was a family business and we thought that was going to be the end of it. But two ladies have taken it over. And somewhere I have their card. They're very, very friendly ladies. And I said to them, I would mention this business in my talk, because if you haven't been there yet, it's part of Bushy history and they will help you with anything. Wonderful haberdashery shop. And it's at the end of Cow Lane. Remember that Bushy used to be a farming area with lots of dairies. And apparently this is now an office. But this barn at the end of Canal Lane, they used to make dairy products. And according to our retired policeman friend, Ken Moxley, they used to make lovely ice cream there. Next to Mavis's is Cowling's, a, a hardware shop which sells almost everything, an excellent service. And here is the inside of Cowling's. This used to be the bank. Sadly, as you all know, we no longer have any holes in the wall. It really is a hole in the wall, isn't it? We no longer have banks in Bushy, but it's not too far to Watford. But next door to what used to be Barclays Bank was the first Metropolitan Police Station in Bushy. And just in front of it is this very unusual marking in the pavement. Now that says VR, Victoria Regina. This was the site of the first telegraph marker. Apparently, they used before telephones were widespread, they used to send telegraphs from the police station. And I think the date on it is, well, you'll have to go and look yourself. I can't read it now. So please go and have a look next door to Barclays Bank in front of the police station and have a look at this marker and you'll be able to see the date. That's a challenge for you all. Just a bit further down the road is Lucy Kemp Welsh's cottage. And it's the only one in the main street of the village which has a blue plaque. Now, Lucy Kemp Welsh lived from 1869 to 1958. She was Herkimer's star pupil. She bought the art school from him for a while and ran it as a school of animal painting. When she was, she was born in Bournemouth and when she was a child, she used to go to the New Forest and paint the horses. I think her horse paintings are more beautiful than George Stubbs paintings of horses. She came to art school with Herkimer. One of her paintings was bought by the Tate, but sadly she was never made a fellow of the Royal Academy. One of the disgraceful things is that Royal Academy had very few female members until Laura Knight in the 20th century. There was Angelica Kaufman and Margaret Moser in the 18th century and then a long time where they had no female um, members of the, art, um, of the Royal Academy. I went to a talk in the National Gallery about three years ago about female artists and they asked everybody in the audience to list how many female artists they'd heard of. And very few people had a list longer than 20. And then I asked the people who convened the meeting if they'd heard of Lucy Kemp Welsh. And to my horror, they hadn't. I think she's an extremely gifted painting. And she was the lady who illustrated one of, uh, one of the first editions of Anna Sewell's Black Beauty. So please go to the Bushy Museum. They have the largest art collection in Hertfordshire and the biggest art collection of Lucy Kemp Welsh's paintings. And I forgot to mention to you that in the museum, you can buy all kinds of leaflets, which I've been using for this talk, Voices from Bushy Past. You can buy a book of walks around Bushy in the museum shop. You can buy lovely cards with pictures of Bushy as it looked in the 18th century. And I'll just flash up very quickly, copyright, Lucy Kemp Welsh's horses. So there's the plaque to her. And just across the road from Lucy Kemp Welsh is this lovely cottage which was built in 1666, the year of the Great Fire of London. There it is. And on the wall is a fire insurance plaque. Now think back to the 17th century when the fire engines came on horse driven, on the back of horse driven carts. And if you didn't have one of these plaques, and your house was on fire and you were next door, 
sorry, they will not put your fire out. You had to have a fire insurance plaque. So next time you walk down the house, the high street, have a look at this 1666 house and it's just opposite St. James's restaurant. These things in the wall were used for reinforcing the wall when the house got old. Well, I got talking to the owners in this porch and I heard the story of these ducks in the pond. Here they are with the duck's eggs. Now, apparently one of my friend's husbands was driving through the fisheries and saw some uh, baby ducklings crossing the road without a mother. So he took them along to the rectory and they ended up in this man's courtyard garden. And now apparently every year, the mother duck flies into his garden, lays her eggs there. They incubate in his courtyard, very protected and safe for 28 days. And then afterwards, after they hatch, they go back into the pond. Now, if I can get this to work, there we are. Here you can see them waddling back into the pond. So next time you walk down to St. James's Church, Think about that man who lives in the 17th century house who rescued the baby ducklings and looked after them until they were old enough to go back to the pond. Okay, next to there you have this rather grotesque 1960s building, the Lucy Kemp Welsh Gallery, which is, has all kinds of public events. Here's Rectory Lane, the only political club that I'm aware of with a building in bushes, the Conservatives, though more and more Liberal Dems are taking their seats here in Bushy. And this is the home of the, this is the old rectory where Jim Craig Gray and his wife live and they helped me a lot with this presentation as well. Here is a view of the church, another view of Herkimer's grave, praying for the world, and we're going to move on just various religious organizations in Bushy besides our shul and the Chabad and the uh, Catholic Church and the churches. We've got the Jains and the Jains apparently don't eat any root vegetables, they only eat carrots or onions. But I believe they are allowed to eat potatoes because they're tubers, not roots. And then Lawrence kindly gave me a picture here of the festival of the Jains. And this is in Faulkner Road. This is the, used to be the Junior Masonic School. It's now the Grange Academy, was Bushy Academy, was Bushy Hall School. And the Roman Road runs through. There are some remains of the Roman Road in the grounds. And they have a farmer's market there. You can look online for that. This is the Connaught, the Royal Connaught Building. And originally it was um, the senior part of a Masonic school, then it became the American University, and then it became uh, private apartments. Here's another view. And this is the foundation stone, 1900, laid by the Duke of Connaught, one of the sons of Queen Victoria. This is another famous building in Bushy, Hayden Howell House, and that was designed by Decimus Burton. Decimus Burton also designed the Wellington Arch and he designed the Lion House at London Zoo. Famous architect. I haven't got a photograph of St. Margaret's School, but that was designed by Waterhouse, who designed the National History Museum and also uh, the Prudential Building in Holborn. But this was the house owned by the cousins of David and Richard Attenborough the Attenborough family. They actually came from Leicester and they rescued and ha rescued some boys, I think, and adopted them during the Holocaust. Very quick look, because this is really Bushy Heath and I'm just covering the village, but this is just off uh, Little Bushy Lane, the plaque to Roy Plumley. And these are some of the wonderful walks we have in Bushy. And I'm just going to mention one walk you might not know, which is Oxy Park, which is down the hill near, um, near Bushy Arches. And you can get to it from B&Q via Dalton Way, um, or you can just walk down the hill. I mean, I would park in the side road by the Sacred Heart Church and walk down the hill. Or if any of you aren't frightened to go on the bus, of course, you can get the 140 or the 258. 
but Watford Council invested quite a bit of money into this park. You can see it's a beautiful park and it's not well known by Bushy residents. Absolutely beautiful. And they've built a state of the art cafe. I took these uh, photographs last year, but apparently the cafe is now completed. And they've got some lovely sculpture in Oxy Park. Another one. Uh, on a Sunday, you can park in Eastbury Road. Beautiful park. Reveley Lodge, I'm sure you all know. Uh, that will come if I give another presentation about Bushy Heath. I haven't got time. But they've got an arts and crafts festival at the moment. If any of you are interested, again, you can get this on the Reveley Lodge website. And I suggest you do that. I know Angela, who's in the audience, is a volunteer at Reveley Lodge. The, Post-COVID, I'm sure they'll be looking for more volunteers. They have wonderful gardens. My grandson loves this rocket. The scarecrow is no longer with us. But you can go there. There's a pop-up cafe, all kinds of things in Reveley Lodge you can enjoy. And I'm sure you all know Mary Forsyth Gardens and Warren Lake. And I want to welcome again to our a member of our shul, who's now a Liberal Democrat County Councillor. If you want to come down to Bushy Village and you don't want to go on a bus, you can park for free in the Country Club, two hours free, or in Kent Place, also two hours free. But once you're over two hours, it's £2.20. The Country Club is £3. And this is a view from Attenborough Fields which is a lovely place to walk. You can get to it from Merry Hill Road. And uh, the bowling club in King George's car park. Now there are lots of things I haven't been able to cover. Joe and Marlene and Joy helped me with lots of facts. I'll have to do a second presentation about Bushy Heath because I just couldn't possibly cover it in this time. So now if there are any questions, we are very pleased to answer them. So. so I'll just so put think. my email address back at the top. Um, so yeah, no, question. So, hang on just a sec. Yeah, so just put think. my email address up again if anybody wants to ask anything um, okay. or any of the links. Okay. So thank you so much. I've learned so much. I've lived in Bushy for many, many years and I've learned so much about it this afternoon. It yeah. is a wonderful place to live for those of us who already live in Bushy. We're lucky to have a lot of history there, a lot of greenery. I mean, I live in Merry Hill Road and you can walk for miles across the Woodland Trust. It's just amazing, it goes on and on. Yeah. Um, and as you say, the Bushy Museum has got so many interesting facts and figures and lots of pictures about the streets in, in days gone by. It's a wonderful resource there. And if you haven't visited it already, as you rightly yeah. say, people ought to take advantage of that. It's, it's really great. Right. Well, as um, I said, um, I've only lived here 14 years and I might have got some of my facts wrong. So I'm very, very happy if anybody wants to correct me. If you don't want to do it in public, you can email me uh, because I, you, you can never stop learning. And there's so much to no. learn about this wonderful village. Thank you yeah. very much. I'll stop screen sharing now. Yes. Do I right. show you? Yeah. So we have a question yeah. from Marion Offenbach. Did you discover why Lulu Lund is spelt as it is? No, and I don't speak German, but maybe somebody in the audience knows. <laughs> Anybody in the audience know? It, it's a fascinating building, that. I remember before the flats were built there. Uh, as you said, what, was it the con not the Conservative British Club? British Legion. British, British Legion, that's right. And then it fell into disrepair for a long while. And now, as you say, it's, it's really modern, beautiful flats there. And how many pubs did you say? 26 originally? 29, I was told. 29. Most of them are blocks, blocks of flats now, I think. Apparently, people used to walk from one pub to the other, uh, getting get drunk, I think. <laughs> they, they used to have bets if somebody could go from Bushy Arches all the way to the Alpine, uh, <laughs> drink at every single pub. There's a I think Pete, Rita wants to ask a question. Yeah, I just wanted to point out to you, which was very interesting. You showed one of the photos, and it's got the Eruv on the photo. It's just opposite Bar where Barclays Bank was. I don't know if you're aware of this, Sue. Eruv. What's on the photo? 
So I didn't catch what you said, Rita. No, can you say that again, Rita? I'll, I'll repeat it again. She uh, said it. Yeah, just uh, when, when you're walking to Bushy Village, you're yes. going into Barclays Bank. Yes. One of your photos, funny enough, showed the a roof. You know, the Saturday, or just it's opposite Barclays. The air roof. The air roof. Oh, the air roof. Yeah, sorry, my pronunciation. Oh. Oh. So <laughs> I just wanted to, to point out that that picture even shows our a roof. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a wide, big pool. It's well camouflaged. It's well camouflaged, Good. yes. Good. Any, any more questions for Sue? Yes, please. Uh, Shirley, could I ask whereabouts the museum is, please? It's in Rudolph Road. I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that. Parallel, if, now let me think what's on the corner. Uh, what's on the corner? You know the Bushy Pharmacy? Little oh, bushy pharmacy. If you just go past that, past the post office, and you turn right, it's Rudolph Road. I, I see. Thank it's you very a, much. Very near, the, very near the high street. The top opposite, of the Kemp, opposite Kemp Place, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's more or less, thank you. It's more or less opposite Kemp Place. Thank you very much. And uh, I really would recommend, uh, when you go in, you have to sign a book, and they're very COVID aware, and of course you have to wear a mask. Right. Okay, look forward to it. Thank you for your wonderful talk. Thank you, Shirley. Brian Mason <laughs> wants to say something. Yeah, it's not really a question, just a couple of interesting things. You mentioned A.E. Matthews. Yes. When we first came to Bushy, he had a house in Little Bushy Lane, yes. and they, there was a gaslight outside which they wanted to change to electricity, and yes. he was against it, and it was in all the newspapers. He sat on a seat outside on the pavement, to try and stop them changing the <laughs> gaslight. Um, what year was this, Brian? Uh, yeah, 60. It's 60 years ago, yeah, 60 years or so. 60. And was it was his house anywhere near the four tubs? On the other side yeah, of the road. Opposite. opposite. Just opposite the four tubs, yeah. Do you think that story about the bathroom no. is true? <laughs> that, that what? Uh, sorry, about four bathrooms. Oh yeah, yes. no, I hadn't heard that. I hadn't heard that. Yes. Uh, yeah. Another Good. thing, another thing is in the early days, uh, certainly when I was here, they only had part-time farmen, um, well, from that fire station, and they used to sound the alarm, the warning that we used to hear in the during the war, oh. and it sort of sent shivers down my spine. That was to call all the farmen when there was a fire to come round to the fire station and go out. Um, Thank you. So I'm going back quite a long time, actually. <laughs> well, it, it's really interesting to hear this. And as I say, if any of you have got stories and you want to email them to me, I'd be absolutely delighted. So I think the Rose Garden was modernised by lottery funding, if I remember yes. rightly. They got quite a large grant for that. Yes, they? yes. I'm sorry if I didn't mention that. That's okay. She did. She did. She did. She did. Yeah. yeah, she did mention it. Yeah. Yeah, because Raina's husband, Raina's late husband, Norman, was very influential in that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a wonderful place. Yeah. Okay. Right. If there's no more questions, Sue, thank you once again thank for you. such an interesting talk. And wonderful. if you want to do Bushy Heath sometime, we'd be only too mm -hmm. delighted to hey, hear well, from you. Mar that will be a joint effort with Marlene. Thank you with as well. But Marlene has yeah. been helping me on that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, I, it's Daphne. I want to say thank you so yeah. much. Probably. It was it was as always great, and yeah. definitely I'll be speaking to you again. And you start work on your bushy heath one, and we'll look <laughs> we'll forward to it. It will be at least six months, my dear, because there's a third grandson due in a, in a few weeks, and I think I'll be I'll have three very well, things. To right. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. We'll we'll wait. We'll wait. You take yeah. care and basil off on. Hope all goes well for the third grandchild. Thank Indeed. you very much. Don't forget current affairs on Thursday. Okay. Yeah. Thank right. you to everybody who's helped. Thank you. Know. you. I really appreciated it. Okay, Thank just you. before we close, just before we close, as uh, Howard has just said, current affairs on Thursday. Martin Moss is hosting that, and next Tuesday our session is casting the dice with Dan Fox. We've heard from Dan Fox before about Jewish people in the British Army. And this is another angle on that in terms of Jews in the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. In other words, Special Operations Executive 
1940 to 46. So sounds another interesting talk from Dan Fox. Please join us Thursday and please join us next Tuesday for Dan Fox. Enjoy the rest of the week. Take care. Take care of the sun. Uh, have Thank a good you. week. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, sir. Bye. 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 Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you very much, Sue. It was brilliant. Thank you. Smiley. Great. Really great. I've got to end the recording, haven't I? Okay. I'm going to my Spanish class now. <laughs> Enjoy. Bye. <laughs>